Hello, Paul here, and I wanna share with you my favorite tips, tricks, hidden features, everything that uh, I use all the time that saves a ton of time. So we're gonna dive into this, gonna go really fast, if that's okay. First off, setting up Photoshop. This is why people don't wanna upgrade Photoshop. They'll set up Photoshop with all their swatches, their styles, their brushes, gradients, and rather than having to export out all of those and set it up on a new machine, they just won't upgrade or whatever. Well, guess what? Preferences general right over here, zoop. Preset syncing, sync your presets. You install Photoshop on a new laptop, it's gonna sync them all to it. Makes life much easier, so do that for sure. Um, also, you'll have your shortcuts as well. I have a number of shortcuts for like tiling, as you can see, Command T. Uh, moving images around, we use the space bar. If you hold on the Shift key, we can actually pan around all of these images. So that's good for comparing two images uh, and navigating around them, that works out uh, really well. We'll kind of jump over to say this one, for instance, or this image, as we can see. You might wonder where you, where the, an image is. I do this all the time. I have too many things up and like, where the heck is this file? Right click, reveal in Finder, just jump right to it on my desktop, right? Check this out. We'll duplicate this one because we will change this one to a template, just like that. And the magic letter right here is T, just add a T to a PSD file or an Illustrator file, add T as well. Now this makes it a template file, so it can't be overwritten. It is protected. In fact, what happens is it makes a new file that is untitled uh, that you can go ahead and modify. So it's great for templates, right? I can jump in, sort of make any changes that I want, throw a gradient overlay, something like that. Now let's talk about adding things quickly in your layers panel off to the side. I added that gradient overlay. You think I have to go in and add it to York, da 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 da? No, just jump over here. Guess what? Hold down the option key, click and drag. Boom, click and drag, just like that, holding down the option key. Same thing for layer masks. Let's bring this up to the top. I wanna to apply this layer mask, option key, click and drag, boom, there it is. Makes it super easy, you can see it masked it out right there. And again, the cool thing is, um, I can't overwrite that file, right? If I click close, it's gonna ask me to save it. Uh, you get the idea. All right, so let's move on from there. Uh, let's talk about all of these various files because you can see this one over here. Oh, this National Parks PSDC. Let's talk about cloud documents. So you could do a save as, and it might be set up like this. Just click on save to cloud documents. Make it a cloud document. As you can see, you'll get this PSDC. Hey, you want to jump to it in the browser? Right click, reveal on the web. Here it is. Boom. Love this. I've been working with Emily on this particular project. Yes, I could share it with a client, but I can also invite Emily to edit it with me. So boom, uh, she has the ability to edit this file and we can continue working. Or she can just add comments like we're doing right here. Layer this over the text. Oh, I like this bear. She's added all these awesome comments, which is cool. She's talking about text. You don't see any text there, guess what? Let's go back, we have versioning, timeline. Check this out last week. Oh yeah, I was uh, adding text to this. This was the text that I added. Here's your versioning. It's bookmarked as well. You can see it right here. You wanna bookmark something and it saves that PSDC file. So you don't need 15 files on your desktop. All the, say like, this is my final, I promise it's the final one dot PSD, right? It's all one in one lovely file. And guess what? It's right over here under version history for that file. And I can see last week, I could see today, uh, bookmark them. Saves about two months back, just so you know. It's pretty awesome, so my one file. And uh, I feel like my desktop is much cleaner, which is great. Uh, let's talk about navigating around a file and setting this up right. All right, here we are. Uh, I don't know what's what off to the side. It's like, what is all this stuff? I don't, what, what does it look like? What is that? Layer 18, I don't know what you are. Change your layer panel, go to panel options, right over here. Change this to layer bounds. In fact, you know what, don't expand new effects or add copy. Just clean up my layers panel. Let me be able to see what's actually on that layer rather than the whole layer bounds. It's just the, uh, the document bounds, it shows me the layer bounds. And what's cool about this is I could hold down the option key to click on it. Oh, it's that flower. Here's another thing we do, option key, click on the layer, zoop, it'll jump to it navigating around this file easily and quickly, as you can see, just by holding down the option key, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. 
All right, that works out pretty well. Um, where do these graphics come from? Well, uh, I got them from Adobe Stock, to be honest with you. So you could search in your libraries panel, um, search Adobe Stock that way. Or what you could do is I encourage you to use plugins right up here. Get some plugins. There's a number of plugins out there for free stock photos. So I use Free Stock Search 2 Pro, which gives you the high res versions right up here. Want to add another butterfly? Let's do that. Rather than searching Unsplash and Pixabay and all these different free sites of assets, it gives me all of them, searches them all, and oh, there's a fancy butterfly. Here's another one. Guess what? Go ahead and download it. You get the idea. Super easy. Use it all the time. Uh, you know, I'm dropping in sort of those images like so. So for this one, let's do this. You ready? We want to add this. We want to remove the backgrounds. Guess what? Open up your properties panel. Love this. I use it all the time. Remove background. Click once. No hands mode. Done. Right? That's amazing. And we could still use, if you want to really isolate just the, just so you can see a little bit better, option click. Uh, we want to just isolate just the butterfly. We could always go in and use my object selection tool. Change it to from rectangle to lasso. And then you could just kind of lasso around this. Whatever the object is, right, it's going to snap to it. And uh, you can go ahead and fill with the, you know, do, do all that jazz. So you get the idea. Uh, select subject, that works out great. We could drop this into place, right? Everything's gonna be looking good. But let's talk about color matching because that's the next step to kind of get this to match within that same scene. This actually works out great right here, sure. Um, but let's take a look at a more extreme example like this one. Uh, this line, I wanna make it look like it's part of this forest. So we will add curves adjustment layer, right? You've done that before, we'll zoom in. We'll clip it to just affect the line. We'll click on that curves layer and then we'll start tweaking it. We're like, oh, it needs to be darker. Oh, we need to like remove the reds. And it's kind of like a guessing game. And it actually does not look that good because the darks are off, right? All that stuff. Remove all the guesswork out of it. Just in fact, undo that. Go up to auto, this little auto button, uh, option click and bring up those settings for auto, right? And that's what I already have set up. Yours might not be set up like this initially, but find dark and light colors. So typically this will just be set to black, but all you need to do is click on the shadows, which is actually gonna be a dark gray, right? The mid-tones, again, I already have this kind of set up, but we could select sort of the mid-tones and adjust accordingly, maybe make that a little bit darker. The highlights aren't pure white, it's actually a little bit darker. So take the guessing out of uh, the compositing that you're doing, snap those neutral mid-tones as well, uh, and you can see, again, what's happening here, kind of adjusting accordingly. You get the idea. Click OK, what happens? It says, hey, you know what, go ahead and save those settings. So if you add more images to this, we just hit that auto button and it will match this guy in there very nice and neat like. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, a couple other things is I will do a dodge and a burn, but I don't want to m mess with the whole photo. So check this out. We will go right down here. We'll add a new layer. You ready? Option click on that new layer icon. Option click. It's going to bring up your new layer settings. And this is what I do. Just jump down, go to say soft light, because that's what I want to do. I want to paint on a layer that's set to soft light. And I get this additional option. Fill with soft light neutral color. So it fills it with a 50% gray is what happens. So this is what it made. It made this new layer, right? Like so, it's set to soft light. And what that means is I can now brush in dark colors. So it's like me burning, if you will, and then uh, adding highlights. So painting with white on that layer. And we can see what's happening. It's adding this painting like that and doesn't affect my layers underneath it. So some shortcuts there for editing. A couple other things I'll do, two more things really fast to really uh, sort of make a composition look good. It's color lookup tables, I'll jump in here. Let's do crisp winner for instance. That'll hide a multitude of sins using uh, good old color lookup tables. Another thing you could do is you could do a copy merged pixels. Let's go file new, paste it in and I'll play with right over here, uh, HDR toning. Yeah, let's do that, HDR toning. Just a fun tip, by the way. We'll change this to, say, Scott 5, and look what it does. It, tell me that doesn't change the look of it. 
right? So I'll do that in a separate file because it needs to be a flattened file. But look what it did there, wow. And then I'll take that and uh, put it on top of this and then maybe adjust the opacity or something. But just some pro tips for compositing right there. All right, let's move into the final segment, which is all about touch-ups. Here I am. And here I am as well. So situation more like I'm, I have way too many lights on me. My skin's too oily. I need to get rid of this shine, okay? So we will use spot healing brush. Right, but check this out right up at the top. Oh, you could sample all layers. So what that means is you can have a layer on top of all the other layers that it will put this content on, right? And we don't want this set to normal. What we wanna do is we wanna say, you know, uh, set this to say like darken. When I set this to darken, it's gonna darken those areas. So that's what it's doing. It's getting rid of the highlights, but not affecting the other pixels, all right? So that's what I would do here, just kind of quickly, just kind of jump in, remove the shine, change this to lighten, and then we could do like the uh, sort of the bags under my eyes, something like that, just kind of clean that up. And again, I'm going really fast here, uh, and then you could adjust the opacity accordingly, but you have your sort of before and then your after, and this already looks better. Put that in a smart object, do a fun camera raw filter, right? And um, maybe play with the texture. So you might wanna bring the texture down a little bit and add an adjustment brush on top. So just paint on the eyes. And what that did is it just increases the exposure for my eyes, just brightens them up a touch. I'll do that on both sides. That looks a lot better. Now those are my touch up tips, right? And in fact, the last thing I will do is jump in and I can take a smart object and always convert it back to the layers as well. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is just to show you the original. So here's my original and then here's the touched up version. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There's so much you can do. Those are my pro tips. Hopefully you guys like this. Try some of them, try all of them. And thanks so much for watching.